Hey there, today we are going to learn how to factor out a monomial as a factor of a polynomial. So for starters, we're going to jump right in and we're going to take a look at this example. It says factor out the GCF. Now remember the GCF means greatest common factor. Now we've looked at that before, so if you haven't looked at that, I would check out it, the last video, which is on the GCF. Okay, so what we want to do first is we want to take a look at this binomial we have here. It's a binomial, so it's not one part. It's actually two terms. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to take out the same thing from both of them. So that's where the C, the common, comes in. So I'm going to look at the numbers first, and it looks like the biggest number I can get out of either of these is going to be a 2, because a 10 is 2 times 5 and a four is two times two. So I'm gonna take out the two, and if I do that, what I'd be left with would be a five right here and a two right here. So you can see that I've canceled out a two out of both of those. The next thing we're gonna look at is they both have a T in them. So I know I can take out a T. The catch is that there's only one T in this one, and then in this one over here, there's two of them. So even after I take one T out, I'm still going to be left with a T with that five. And I want you to notice this was a minus, so I'm going to keep it minus. And so to factor out the GCF, what we're going to end up is this right here. We're going to end up with two T on the outside of the parentheses. Now, when you think about factoring, you should probably think about it like... Uh, the opposite of the distributive property. So if we were to distribute this out and we were going to multiply into each term of this binomial, if we were to multiply that out, we'd end up with 10t squared minus 4t, which is exactly what we started with. So you can think of the distributive property being the inverse property of factoring. So when we factor, we actually are going to end up with parentheses. And when we distribute, we get rid of the parentheses. Let's look at another example. In example two here, we again have a binomial. So there's something I can take out of each of them. And if I take out, it looks like a six, actually, because this is going to be a six divided by six. And this is 12 divided by six. If I do that, I end up with six on the outside of the parentheses. And then on the inside of parentheses, what I'm left over with is going to be 2x squared plus, uh, well, what's 6 divided by 6? Well, that's just 1. It might be tempting to try to take out more, like try to take out the x, except we only have an x in this term. So we can't take an x out of both of them. So this is actually done. When we're factoring out the greatest common factor, it doesn't mean it's going to look simpler. It's actually going to look more complicated than many times because we're actually making it we're adding parentheses and we're making more th things. There was only two terms here, but now there's the six on the outside. Okay. Example three. This time we have R's, but I'm going to focus on the three that I can take out of both of them. I can take a three out of three and I can take a three out of 27. If I do that, then I end up with the three. And then on the inside, I just have, well, a 1, because 3 divided by 3 is 1. I also have the r to the 4th minus, so it looks like I can take the r to the 4th and the r 3rd. Do you see that we can only take out 3, because that tells us only 3, because the smaller one has only 3. If I take out 3, then it becomes 3r to the 3rd. If we do that, that one cancels out. And this one cancels down to just 1r minus, what's 27 divided by 3? 9. Uh, truth be told, remember that 1 is optional, so you could also just write this as 3r cubed times r minus 9. Remember that we can always check this if we wanted by distributing this back in. So we could just really quickly go boom, boom. And if we did that, we'd end up back with what we started. But we can stop right there because we're trying to factor. 
Example four, I'm really trying to stretch it here. Notice this has four terms. It's got some big exponents and some funky numbers, but we don't need to get caught up on the big numbers like 34. And what can we take out of 34? Because if we really want to take the same thing out of every, every one of these numbers, we should really focus on the smallest one. And so we want to think what's the biggest or what's the greatest common factor? What's the greatest one we can take out of a four? Well, if we could take out a four, that'd be great because then that'd be the whole thing, right? Except if we go over here and try, try to take a four out of 18, uh, that's not gonna work out. That's gonna be like 4.5 and we don't wanna have any decimals. So even though four would be nice to take out, we can't do it. So what's another number that goes into four? Does three go into four? No, that doesn't do it. So that leaves us with two. And it looks like actually that two would be the greatest common factor. Don't get boiled down. Some people will try to factor each of them, like the 34, the 26, but we only need to focus on the smallest one. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this just by taking that 2 out. And I'm going to just put the 2 down here. I know I'm going to have 2 and then something, but let me just simplify this just a little bit. I have 17j to the 9 and 13j to the 7. I'm keeping the negative there because it was a negative. Plus the 4 becomes a 2. Minus the 18 becomes 9. Okay. So I double check that I copy down all of my J's. All right. So they do all have J's in them. So I can definitely take out a J. What's the smallest exponent on the J? It's going to be that J to the fourth. So I can take at least that much out. If I take out J to the fourth, that means all of these are going to go down by 4. So that become a 5, and that becomes a 3, and that becomes a 2. So our final answer comes out to be 17j to the 5th minus 13j to the 3rd plus 2j to the 2nd minus 9. All right. That's about as complicated as we can make it, or at least that's what you might think. The only other thing we could really do to kick this up a notch, and before I show you, I just want to remind you, what are we doing here? We're trying to find the greatest common factor. So what we're looking for is we look at the smallest coefficient, the smallest number in front, and we decide what the biggest number we can take out of that and everything else is. In this case, it was just a two. So all the big scary numbers didn't scare us. Then we look at each uh, variable and we take out the most we can take out. And we do that by, again, looking at the smallest exponent. Now, when we look at this last one, the only thing I could think of to make it a little bit more difficult, and I'm going to do this one right now, is this one has three terms. So I could make it more terms, obviously, but I think that would, wouldn't be more difficult. But I put three variables in there. So I'm going to first look at the numbers. What can we take out of the numbers? Again, I'm going to look at the smallest one, and there's 232, so it'd be nice if 32 came out. But obviously, we know that 32 is not going to work because it's not going to come out of 40. We could do 16. Oh, 16 isn't going to come out of 40 either. So what could we take out of 32? Uh, if it's not 32, it's not 16. What about 8? Actually, that's going to do it for us. Because if I do 40 divided by 8, I end up with 5. And 32 divided by 8, I end up with four and I have four again. All right, so I took out an eight. So in parentheses, we're gonna have all this mess, but on the outside, we're definitely gonna have an eight. The next thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the variable. So I'm gonna look at the first kit variable is K. And you can see that I have one, at least one K in each one. So I know I can take out a K. What's the smallest exponent on the Ks? It's actually gonna be this last one just has one K. So I can only take out 1K. So that one's gone, but what about the rest of them? Well, 3 minus 1 is 2, and 9 minus 1 is 8. So we have K to the 8th, K squared. Now, M, we have 1 there, 2 there, 1 there. So it looks like the most we can take out is 1. That'll cancel out there and there, but it won't cancel out here. It'll just take away that exponent. We still have one left over.
Next thing we take out is the N. Again, we only have possibility to take out one N because of this first one. If we do that, that leaves three ends there and just one end there. Now I'm going to remember my positive and negatives there. I have minus 32 and plus. And that is my final answer for this problem. So it seems like a lot, and it certainly did take us a while to work through this whole problem, but each little bit was very simple math. We were just doing really just some subtraction and maybe some division at the absolute worst. Okay. Today we have learned how to factor out a monomial as a GCF. Subscribe and continue learning abundantly.